So you want to buy a telescope to look at planets. No worries, you came across a right video. But if you don't know anything about telescopes at all, then don't just go and buy some random telescope because most likely you will end up buying some junk telescope which is good for nothing. And one thing you should know that astronomy is an expensive hobby and you get what you pay for. So if you buy a cheap telescope then do not expect a great performance from that telescope. Now when buying a telescope for looking at planets the most important thing is aperture and focal length of that telescope. From aperture and focal length you can determine focal ratio which makes focal ratio also one of the important factors. The aperture of a telescope will be directly responsible for the amount of light your telescope collects. The bigger aperture will collect more light and the more light a telescope collects the objects will look much brighter and sharper through your telescope. So that is the basic function of aperture. Second thing is the focal length of a telescope. When it comes to planets, focal length is the most important factor. The longer focal length your telescope has, the more details of the planets you will see. It means you can zoom in more on the surface of the planet. Basically, focal length determines how much area of a sky you can see through your telescope at once. A longer focal length will give you a narrow field of view which means you will see small portion of the sky but in much great detail which is good for looking at planets. Think of it like using a zoom lens on a camera. Imagine you are standing in front of a landscape and you take a wide angle shot of that landscape. Now in that wide angle shot of the landscape, you can see the sky, the mountains, the trees and the entire scene in the wide angle view. In astronomy, this wide angle view is mostly useful for large objects like galaxies and nebulas. Now in the same landscape, if you zoom in on a single tree, suddenly the sky, the mountains and everything else disappears from your field of view and only tree will be in focus. This is known as narrow field of view. Similar to that tree in the landscape, planets are just tiny part of a galaxy or a nebula. So to see the details of these planets, you will need a higher focal length which means you will need a narrow field of view. This is why longer focal length is important to look at planets. Third factor is the focal ratio. The focal ratio is determined by focal length divided by the aperture of the telescope. A higher focal ratio means you can see more details of the planets. I have covered all these basic concepts of telescopes like aperture, focal length in great detail in this playlist. So make sure you watch this playlist and understand it. Now I will show you how focal length affect your view through telescope. I have two telescopes, one is StarSense 114LT and second is Nexstar 8SE. The StarSense has an aperture of 4.5 inches and its focal length is 1000 mm. And next RAC has an aperture of 8 inches and focal length of 2032 mm. 8SE's focal ratio is 10 and StarSense has a focal ratio of 9. The next 8SE is superior in every possible way than StarSense telescope. But for this comparison, just focus on focal length. So when I look at Jupiter with star sense with 25 mm eyepiece, you can see that Jupiter looks very tiny. But with same eyepiece, when I look at Jupiter through 8 SE, you can see a little zoomed in view of Jupiter. This is because higher focal length of 8 SE. The sharper views through 8 SE is because of bigger aperture and better optics. Now if I use 2x Barlow lens with star sense, then its focal length will be doubled to 2000 mm, which is almost equal to Nectar 8 SE's focal length. 
So if you look at Jupiter with Barlow lens and 25 mm eyepiece, you can see that the size of the Jupiter almost looks the same as you saw through Nexstar 8SE. But you can also see that there are many aberrations and you can't see many details of the planets through star sense. This is because of smaller aperture and the optics of star sense telescope. By using 2x Barlow, I am almost pushing my telescope to its limits. So I hope you got some idea about how focal length affects the views through your telescope. Basically, if you want to enjoy the views of planets through your telescope, you will need a telescope which has a decent aperture and a little bit longer focal length. Now, there are different types of telescopes and one of the type is Maxuto Cassegrain Telescope. These MAC telescopes are known as planetary telescope. I will cover them in the later part of this video. Taking all this into account, I have made a list of telescopes which are good for planets. I will go in the order from cheaper to expensive telescopes. The first telescope on my list is Star Sense 114 LT telescope. Now this is a very low budget option. The aperture of this telescope is 4.5 inches. The focal ratio is 1000 mm and focal ratio is 9. The specification of this telescope perfectly fits in the category of planetary telescope. The aperture size of this telescope is big enough to collect more light and the 1000 mm focal length will show you some details of the planets. I was able to see the bands of the Jupiter and the rings of Saturn as well. Again this telescope is for absolute beginners who are on a really really tight budget and just want to get started with stargazing and astronomy. The second telescope on my list is any 6 inch or 8 inch Dobsonian. The Dobsonian telescopes are great and they are the most value for money telescopes. If you know that your telescope will be sitting in one place and you will be not moving it often then the Dobsonian telescope should be your first choice. They will offer you more value for your money. There are a lot of companies which manufacture these Dobsonians. But if I had to choose, I would go with Skywatcher or Celestron for better optics quality. Any 6 inch Dobsonian will have a focal length of 1200 mm. This 1200 mm focal length is good for looking at planets. The 6 inch aperture is big enough to collect more light and the 1200 mm focal length will show you some surface details of these planets. On the other hand, any 8 inch Dobsonian will also have a focal length of 1200 mm. Some might have 1300 or 1400 mm but most of them have 1200 mm of focal length. But that 2 extra inch of aperture of 8 inch will collect 77% more light than 6 inch of aperture which will show you the objects much clearer and sharper with 8 inch Dobsonian. If you like you can also go with 10 inch or 12 inch Dobsonian but before you go for them keep in mind the portability and weight of these Dobsonian because that's the only disadvantage of Dobsonian telescope. The third telescope on my list is Nexstar 127SLT or Nexstar 4SE or Skywatcher SkyMax 127. So all of these telescopes are Maxuto Cassegrain telescope, which means these are planetary telescopes. The 127SLT has an aperture of 5 inches and a focal length of 1500 millimeters. The focal ratio of this telescope is 12. The 5 inch aperture of this telescope will collect enough light and the 1500 mm focal length will show you more details of these planets. You can see that with just 5 inch of aperture, this telescope has more focal length than 6 inch or 8 inch Dobsonian. On top of that, this telescope is very compact. This is because this is a compound or catadioptric telescope. This is what these compound telescopes can achieve with its compact and efficient design. 
The Next Star 4SE is the first telescope from the iconic series of Next Star SE series of telescope from Celestron. The aperture of this telescope is around 100 mm which is 4 inches and the focal length is 1325 mm. Its focal ratio is 13. With the combination of aperture and its focal length, it will show you much surface details of the planets. The aperture is big enough to collect more light and the focal length is long enough to show you much more details of the planets. The mount of Nexstar 4 SE has a built-in wedge. So with this mount, you can also track planets for your planetary photography. Both 127 SLT and 4 SE will cost you around $600 plus or minus $100. The 127 SLT offers you more aperture and longer focal length. However, the 4SE offers you better optics and a built-in wedge for your planetary photography. Third option to this telescope is Skywatcher SkyMax 127. Now this telescope is similar to Nexstar 127 SLT telescope. but you can only buy the optical tube of this telescope. You will have to purchase mount separately. Even though these are planetary telescopes, these telescopes will also show you some bright deep space objects, but you will get much zoomed in view of those deep space objects. The fourth telescope on my list is Nexstar 6SE. Now, this is a Schmidt Cassegrain type telescope from Nexstar SE series of Celestron. The aperture of this telescope is 6 inches, about 150 mm, and the focal length is 1500 mm. The aperture will collect enough light so that the object will look brighter and sharper, and the 1500 focal length will show you the surface details of the planets. The mount of this telescope can easily handle its optical tube assembly. So it will be able to do better tracking for your planetary photography. Also with the limited ability of this computerized alt as mount, you can also do deep space astrophotography with Nexstar 6SE. If you use focal reducer and mount this telescope on a good equatorial mount, then this telescope will be a great setup for deep space astrophotography. With some upgrades, you can get best of both worlds with Nexstar 6SE telescope. The next telescope on my list is Nexstar 8SE. It is a big brother of 6SE and the largest telescope in the Nexstar SE series of Celestron. I own the 8SE and so far I have no complaints. This is one of the best telescopes you will buy in every aspect of stargazing. The aperture of this telescope is 8 inches around 203 mm and focal length is 2032 mm and its focal ratio is 10. So with its big aperture and longer focal length you will be able to see more details of the planets. And on top of that the optics of this telescope has multiple coatings which gives you sharper and much clearer views. You can watch the full review of this telescope in this video. Evolution 8 inch has the same optical tube as Nexstar 8 SE. The mount of Evolution 8 will offer you more functions and stability than Nexstar 8SE's mount. The Edge SD 8 inch is also similar to Nexstar 8SE optical tube, but the optics of Edge SD are much better. These Edge SD telescopes offer flat views till the edge of your field of view. And keep in mind these Edge SD telescopes you can only buy the optical tube. You have to buy the mount separately or you have to mount this telescope on the Nexstar SE mount or the Evolution mount. Now these telescopes are not cheap. They are expensive. But if you are really interested, these telescopes are totally worth it. Why? Because 6SE and above telescopes are very versatile. You can use them for planetary viewing and for astrophotography as well with the limited capacity of their mounts. 
and if in future you decide to go full astrophotography way then with some upgrades to this telescope these telescopes can be a great astrophotography setup so this versatility and great optics make these telescopes better than most beginner level and mid level telescopes this is why these telescopes are expensive but they will offer you much more value and once you buy these you don't need to buy any other telescope for long period of time because this telescope will last you for 8 to 10 years now if the budget is not at all issue for you then you can also go with evolution 9.25 inch telescope or evolution 11 inch telescope this telescope will show you planets in much more details if you want even bigger aperture then you can go with 14 inch or 16 inch go to dobsonian telescopes from skywatcher but again keep in mind the weight and portability of dobsonian these are some of the telescopes which are good for viewing planets links to all these telescopes are in the description and if you are going to buy a telescope then i think you should know the basic concepts of telescopes so i recommend you again to watch this playlist which covers all the basic concepts of telescope anyway if you found this video helpful then give it a like and subscribe and share this video with someone who is interested in stargazing and astronomy and i will see you in the next video bye